I want to talk about how important it is to let the light in. To let the light in. That's the word I want to share with you. Welcome back to For the Life of It. This is a YouTube channel dedicated to finding, embracing, and abiding in the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. So if that's something that sounds good to you, take a moment, subscribe, be part of this community, and please add to the conversation. I always love to hear your thoughts. I read my comments. I do my best to get back to them as soon as possible. But join in the conversation. This is this is a community where we can sharpen each other, speak life over one another. So I'm so glad that you're here. Today I have been inspired by that meme you've probably seen going around the internet that says, you're basically a house plant with complicated emotions. Drink lots of water and get sunshine. And uh, I'm inspired by that because I see that you know, it's funny, it's cute, but also on a spiritual level, there is so much there. And I was just thinking this last week, man, there there is so much spiritual truth and depth. And I, I just wanna dig into that today. So you might notice my tulips in the background. It was Valentine's uh, weekend and my husband always overdoes it with the tulips. They're my favorite flower. So I thought I would include them just for a more life-giving, view for you so you don't have to look at my face this whole time but uh, if you haven't yet grab yourself something delicious to drink and uh, let's chat let's talk about life well if we are friends on social media you have probably recognized this little plant look at how well it is doing I posted a video a couple months back about this plant that was literally dying it was in a not a great location in our home and it was just completely withering away and the holy spirit just spoke to my heart and um and was talking to me about environment i'm gonna include that video right now just to catch you up i have prophetic vision to see this plant alive even as i see it right now in the natural and in its reality it's dying, but I have vision to see beyond what is and to what it could be and actually should be. And it's just preaching to me, this plant, because we need to have this kind of vision for people, even when it looks like they're dying or even for our own lives when it feels like everything's just too heavy. We need to have vision to see not just what could be, but as should be, as we were created to be. I love how God speaks to us in the most simple ways. My plant that was dead and dying yesterday, I moved. It is now beside a windowsill. I gave it a little bit of water. This is the very next day. This is the very next day. It is coming back to life. It is standing tall. And this just speaks to me, this preaches at me. We have the ability to stoke the life in a person or to throw them away. I wanna just encourage you to have vision to see. You can, you can take someone who looks like they're on their way out and look at one day, one day with proper care and feeding. This plant is coming back to life. Let's see how it's doing tomorrow. What an important principle to remember that we need to have vision to see rightly for our own lives, also for the lives of others. But today I wanna to talk about you. Today I wanna to talk about your life and how you're positioned. In elementary school, we learn about how important it is for plants to get sunshine and water in order 
to live. This is how photosynthesis works. It absorbs the sunshine, turns it into food so that it can live. And I just want to say in this hour where there is so much opportunity to just sit under the weight of the darkness of the bad news of the world, it is so important, friend, to open up the windows, open up the windows of your spirit, of your soul, and let the light in. You need to be taking a moment today, every day, to make sure that the light of God's truth is shining on your spirit. More than you sit in darkness, more than you listen to the news, more than you listen to your friend, more than you watch YouTube, more than any of those things. Make sure to take time to let the light of God's love and his word shine in on you. We know that the word of God is a light, it's a lamp onto our path. I love that picture. I notoriously have to go to the bathroom at nighttime. I'm also legally blind because of my glasses. And so I really understand the imagery of fumbling around in the dark. And it can be scary and frustrating and also really painful. And I've just been there so many times. And I love the imagery that this passage says so clearly that the word of God lights the way so that we don't need to fumble around. There is a clear direction. We are actually children of light. Just let that sink in for a second. So he wants us to go to the light, to be filled and alive with his light. Let it soak in, open up the windows, read his word, meditate on it, be transformed, be made fully alive. And then to be on this earth and bring oxygen. Do you know how important our role is to bring hope? To bring the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To be rooted and grounded and established in love. So that we're unshakable when the storm comes. That when those loud voices come. When the noise comes. When the darkness closes in on us. The reality is we do have complicated emotions and all of that can be tied to hormones. It can be tied to deficiencies with vitamins, all sorts of things, diet, lack of exercise. While we're in this COVID time, mental health is it's like a forefront conversation and it's a, a conversation we need to talk about. But let me just tell you, when we're talking about self-care and, and all of these things, self-care begins with soul care. If you nurture and cultivate life in the soil of your spirit, of your heart, if you are abiding, rooted and grounded and established in love, then you will flourish. It comes out from inside. And, and people can see, right? People will be able to see, and that's just what Jesus says. They'll recognize you by your fruit. What is on your life that is visible to others? We are carriers of light. We are carriers of the kingdom. But my friend, Jesus warns us not to become too much like this world. In Matthew chapter 5, which is one of my very first favorite passages of scripture ever, it's when I really began to understand uh, Jesus and the message of the gospel when he's talking about being the light of the world and being the salt of the earth. And he says, how are you going to be the salt of the earth if you lose your saltiness, if you lose your differentness, it's good for nothing. You're just gonna be trampled on. Good, like that, that's not the assignment that God has for us. That's not the assignment God has for you. Even just walking out a life that is abundant and fruitful, that preaches, that preaches. It preaches without even saying a word. When you are abiding and living, when you've got the light of God shining in on the windows of your soul and your spirit, we become like that tree that it talks about in scripture, planted by water, 
bearing fruit in every season, evergreen. We are always fruitful. We know that Jesus said, man and woman cannot live on bread alone. Spiritually, you are searching and looking for more. And Jesus says, only he can satisfy that he is the bread of life. Wow. <laughs> he says that every word that comes out of his mouth will sustain us, that he is the truth. Now, I have never, ever met another person who claimed to be truth personified. We are living in a day and age where people really are looking for truth. They're looking for answers. They don't even know they're desperately looking for Jesus. Jesus told us the way. He said, I am the way. I'm the truth and I am the life. And he came to bring this abundant life. And do you know how he said he was nourished? He said, my food, my nourishment is to do the will of my father. So not only are we people who saturate ourselves in the light of the word of God, who abide in the presence of God by prayer and worship and being in community, but also we need to do the will of the Father to have that satisfaction, to really feel nourished, to feel spiritually satisfied. The reality is we are, we're basically just complicated house plants. We need the light of Jesus Christ shining in us. Let me ask you, what windows do you need to open up today? How can you let light in. This is the thing about light that I love. Light doesn't need to do anything to make the darkness go away. You don't need to like do some, you just need to sh just show up. Here, I got a light here. Look, the darkness goes. Just turn on the light. Turn on the light. Turn on the light. Open up the word. Watch what you're listening to. There are so many toxic and negative things that we feed on. It's like a way to just cope sometimes. We're just feeding on garbage all the time. We would never ever, we would never allow someone to come and like dump a dump truck of, of garbage on our front lawn. I would never do that. And yet, when I subject myself to hours of filth by what I'm consuming, by what I'm watching, by what I'm listening to, I am allowing literally Hollywood, whoever, to come into the, my most precious inner sanctum and dump trash. Could you imagine feeding your plant soda? Okay, my American friends will appreciate that, but all my Canadian friends make fun of me. Well, not all of them, because some are not rude. Thank you, kind friends. But I just find it more satisfying to say soda than pop. We say pop in Canada. That's like the widely accepted way to say soda. But soda, just try saying it right now. Soda. Isn't that just, it's just so much more enjoyable. So anyway, what if you poured a can of soda on your plant, on your beautiful plant? It would begin to wither. There are things that we can do in the natural that affect our spiritual being when we're dumping junk into our spirit man all day long, when we're consuming, when we're not letting the light in, when we're hiding, when we're hiding. Friend, stop hiding. Open up the window. Let the light in. Go outside. Get in the light. Physically, I'm talking like literally get out of your house let the light in. You know, one of my favorite things to do when my husband and I were married, we our discipline has greatly decreased. We rarely do this. Sometimes we drive around and pray. But one of my favorite things to do when we were first married and had kids to care about was we would go for prayer walks together. It was so life-giving. It was life-affirming. And here's the thing. There is going to be part of your sin nature that fights 
against your spirit. This is what Paul said. This battle going on, right, inside of us, there's a battle for your for your spirit to have dominance or your flesh to have dominance. Whatever you feed is going to be stronger. Just think about them. I preached a message once. Just think about them as little puppies. Like, what puppy are you feeding more? If you're feeding your spirit more, that is going to have dominance. That's going to be the beast that drives you. And you will be satisfied because that beast is a beast that serves your purpose. Or you can feed your flesh. You can feed that little flesh puppy and that beast will eat you from the inside out. It feels good at the time and this is what the enemy loves to do and this is what he's done since the garden. He tempts us. He's like, this is going to satisfy you. They sound like a mob boss. Take this, do this. God says not to, but it will satisfy you. And then you believe the liar and you begin to feed it. And it fools you and it leaves you. Usually it leaves you feeling full of shame. Let the light in, abide, and lastly, do the will of the Father. If you feel like you just are are lacking purpose, the best place to begin is just to look at what the heart of God the Father is. I shared a little bit about this in my video about finding your purpose. You can find that video here. <laughs> Make sure that what you are purposing to do aligns with the will of the Father. Because that is where our nourishment comes first and foremost. We are, remember, citizens of heaven. We are on this earth for a time. Scripture says, our life is like a mist, a vapor on the water. Here, one moment, gone the next. Can I just ask you just to close your eyes when this video is done? Take 15 seconds and ask the Holy Spirit, who is someone today that needs a word of light and truth spoken? And then just text them. Just share a scripture. Just take a moment and exercise communion with the Holy Spirit by listening and then being the light on this earth by sharing the good news of the truth of the word of Jesus. Well guys, thanks for spending some time with me. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. Be rooted and grounded in this community here and share your thoughts. Be part of the conversation. One-way conversations are so boring. Let me hear what the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. Let me hear, are you crazy plant person? <laughs> Let me hear about it. Let me hear what, what's happening in your life. Abide and thrive and be fruitful and multiply. This is the will of God the Father for you, friend. I love you more than you know, and I will see you next time. Mwah!